thanks for joining today. Uh, my name is Mark Rakmilovich. Uh, I'm with Oracle. And with me, actually, remotely, we have Gaurav Sarkar, uh, who is our senior manager for blockchain product management. He's going to be helping me with a demo. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, local development tooling and show you uh, blockchain app builder, which is a uh, technology that Oracle has developed over the last couple of years uh, to work with Hyperledger Fabric to automatically generate chain code. And uh, uh, while it started as a more generic capability, we have also added support for both fungible and non-fungible tokens in it. So we'll show you what that looks like. Just a couple of words on uh, the Oracle blockchain platform. It's basically Hyperledger Fabric with a lot of extensions. We started working on it in about 2017. Released the platform in 2018 in the market, so it's been out there for about four years or so, around 200, 250 maybe customers using it. It's basically full Hyperledger Fabric platform with Oracle additions, operations, and uh, management monitoring capabilities, API gateway for REST APIs, event subscriptions, and integration capabilities, standard Hyperledger uh, peers, ordering service, membership service for the network, and then all of the pre-assembled components around container management, identity management, operations, zero downtime patching, all of the kind of enterprise-grade features that many of our customers need and expect in the enterprise software, plus a lot of security, confidentiality, capabilities we have added. We have an integration to stream the data into Oracle database from the history updates so that you could apply analytics, uh, machine learning, etc. It works with other non-Oracle nodes as well, and we have an on-premise version. This is predominantly used in the cloud. It's 80% of our customers are cloud-based in Oracle cloud infrastructure, but uh, 10 to 20% are using our OBP Enterprise Edition, which is a virtual machine software appliance kind of form factor. And we provide a bunch of integrations, of course, with various applications, Oracle and third party, and so on. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work over the years to simplify the infrastructure build, right? So customers used to struggle a lot in the early days of particularly Hyperledger Fabric with all the dependencies and all the complexities and version updates and all the rest. Now, basically come to our cloud, uh, a couple clicks, it's blockchain as a service, everything's pre-provisioned, takes about 10, 15 minutes. You have the entire environment up and running. Uh, it's easy to integrate with all of the capabilities we built in. There is a lot of security measures added into it, role-based access control. Uh, access control is for chain code users to be able to have fine-grained accessibility management, uh, management operations monitoring without requiring a PhD, ability to extend easily, add new nodes, expand the network, and all of that. So we've done a lot of this work to help simplify the adoption of blockchain for customers, but then we found they're still spending a lot of time building the actual applications, because blockchain, ledger, et cetera, it's all infrastructure. You need to have uh, the smart contracts and all of those application components that you need to make it valuable in your business. So we have done two things. One is we've created a partner community. We have a very strong partner ecosystem with a variety of industry solutions uh, that uh, customers can adopt uh, for different use cases. And then we decided there's still going to be people who are going to need custom build, or are going to want to implement custom applications. And so we've created a tool called Blockchain App Builder. It's a low-code development tool that uh, provides a lot of uh, productivity help to developers, but it can also automatically generate chain codes from a specification. Um, you know, it's essentially built in order to allow non-blockchain experts to build simple to medium complexity blockchain applications without writing code. And so uh, when we initially created it, you could specify whatever data assets you wanted to manage. Uh, you would define the data schemas, et cetera, and then we would automatically generate all of the CRUD kind of persistence uh, business logic around that. Um, the next phase was to add tokenization support for both fungible and non-fungible tokens. Um, so the way that this works is that you can essentially create a specification file and that's in YAML or JSON format. And then after you've defined the data assets, the properties, validation rules, et cetera, you automatically generate uh, the chain code and scaffold the project. Um, once this is available, you can go ahead and use it as it's built with all of the uh, basic CRUD methods, create, update, query, delete, et cetera. But you can also add your own custom logic on top should you need to. And so it could be either no code or low code kind of environment. Uh, and we'll show you how to add custom implementation methods in the demo in a minute. Um, then you can deploy it to a local environment with a built-in 
hyperledger uh, fabric uh, infrastructure, and you can test it locally. Right? Uh, once you've done testing and debugging, et cetera, you can package and deploy it automatically using the tool to uh, blockchain platform nodes or any other third-party hyperledger fabric nodes. You could just standard hyperledger fabric packaging. Um, and uh, you can start exercising it in your environment. So a lot of value here, obviously. Uh, you know, automated code generation, easy customization with uh, custom methods, uh, much faster deployment and testing. If you're deploying to a remote environment to test, difficult to debug, you have to go back and forth. By the time you're actually ready, it's going to take a number of iterations and it's going to be slow. While you can test and debug in a local environment, it's much, much faster. So uh, much higher productivity for developers. And then when you package and deploy it, in our case, you also uh, automatically benefit from all those APIs we expose. Every chain code method is now automatically available as a REST APIs that you can invoke. And we're going to show you that. So what you're going to see in the demo is a Visual Studio Code extension version of the blockchain app builder. We also have a command line version for CI CD integration, for power users, developers who don't want the UI, but most people would use the GUI. In there, we can tailor the specification file. We will tailor fungible and non-fungible tokens. We will then automatically scaffold the project, generate the chain code, extend it with some custom methods for marketplace operations. So we're going to have a little bit of an NFT marketplace in the demo. Um, then we deploy it, expose REST APIs, goes through a one-time setup to initialize the token system, set up accounts and roles, and then run through the actual transactions on the marketplace, uh, minting, issuing NFTs, buying, selling, et cetera, for fiat payments as well as um, you know, tokens through those REST APIs. So uh, <coughs> let me switch over now and have uh, Gaurav, Gaurav is here with us, talk through a little bit more details of the demo. <laughs> Sure. Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, so even though I'm demoing it uh, remotely, I'll ensure that you film me just beside you. So for the demo, uh, we have selected a use case which we all can correlate to. And this use case is related to the NFT art collection marketplace. So uh, if you see, the museums are looking for an alternate source of revenue from the people between 20 to 30 years who are highly active on the internet but rarely ever visit museums. So in this use case, the NFT platform provider onboards the museums first and provide the NFT minting privilege. So which means that the museum curators can only mint the NFTs. Now, NFT platform provider also onboards the NFT buyers who are given some fungible tokens initially uh, because they, they are uh, getting onboarded for the very first time. The museum curator uh, means uh, so what, what happens next is the museum curator mints the art token and the consumer one purchases the art token by uh, paying it through the fiat currency. Once the consumer one purchases the token, uh, he can resell. He can resell that uh, NFT and he moves towards the seller side. And uh, if he resells, he will, uh, so, so now the consumer two can purchase an art token by paying through the fungible token. So he, he paid through the fungible token and in return, he got a specific art token. So this is the entire application uh, that we are going to implement through the blockchain app builder. And uh, the blockchain app builder will uh, automatically generate the chain code. You, it, it, be, it will help you to deploy the chain code into the Oracle blockchain cloud services. And also, you can do the testing. Uh, but for the testing, we'll do we'll use the REST APIs, which are readily available from the Oracle blockchain platform. We'll use the Postman to execute those. So uh, before, so let us quickly jump into the blockchain app builder. So as Mark mentioned, uh, this is the blockchain app builder VS Code extension. So if you see over here, there's a whole written over here. It's an Oracle blockchain platform related one. So here uh, you can uh, define, so there are three things over here. One is a chain core, specifications, and environment. So the starting point for blockchain app builder is a specification. So you, you need to specify what kind of asset you are going to build with blockchain app builder. So if you see over here, we are going to build an art collection asset. 
uh, what kind of uh, asset it is, so it's a non-fungible, whole, whole non-fungible token. And the standard that is followed here is ESC721. The plus signifies that we are providing additional methods on top of ESC721. The second part in this uh, uh, declarative specification file is a behavior definition. So you can define different behaviors like indivisible, mintable, transferable, and so on, so on and so forth. So it would create, when it generates the code automatically, it would create all the methods which are relevant for this behavior. The two very important part over here is uh, metadata and the properties. So metadata is uh, the one which cannot be changed once it is created. So the the uh, the, the token owner uh, cannot change this uh, metadata information, like the painting name, the description, painter name, or so on and so forth. But uh, there are few attributes which can be updated by the uh, by the token owner, like the price of the specific uh, uh, asset or the on-sale flag. If you'd like to put it again into the marketplace, you'd set the on-sale flag to uh, true. And on top of it, there are custom method support. So you can define a number of custom methods here. So for this use case, we are defining three custom methods. One, sell. Two, post it into the marketplace for, uh, for, for selling purpose. Buy with direct payment. This is to buy the, buy the NFT through the uh, fiat currency and buy with loyalty token. So this is with the fungible token that you'd like to purchase with. Right. So let me quickly jump into how to create the chain code. So if you come into this chain codes tab, you just click on this plus and this is what will pop up. So I have already filled it in for the paucity of time. So we have uh, the name, uh, the language support you can have, Go or TypeScript and specification and the location. So I'll just quickly create it. So it would take a minute's time to get this uh, specific uh, chain code created, so it would automatically generate the chain code. Uh, I'll uh, show you our, auto, uh, our already generated chain code over here. So let me uh, let me take you to directly the automatically generate chain code. Okay. Yeah. So by the time I'll just move to this. So this is the controller file. So the controller file has a complete code uh, it would be created over here so you can see all the controller file is uh, available here the controller file contains two different types of uh, things one is sdk method so this is where the sdk method is and then on top of it we have the wrapper method so this is the wrapper method what we have between the sdk and the wrapper method we have the authorization check so we have the authorization check which which you can also customize Right. And, and this is just, uh, Graf, I can add, just, this is essentially implementing our role by security mechanism that you can extend. Right. Right. One minute left. Yeah. And, and then uh, you'll be having the model file. So model is uh, having the entire data structure for you. So, and if you see here uh, in this uh, controller file, we have, uh, sorry, this is, so we, in the controller file, we can add the custom method. So here at the very end, uh, we have, uh, these are the three custom method signatures that, that are created, but you can actually uh, replace this custom method. Uh, so I have some custom methods already created. I'll just replace it here. So I'll just replace it, save it. Okay. So now, so once, once, you are, once you have saved it, now your custom method is available for deploy. So you can just uh, uh, select it, oh, sorry. You can just yeah, select Let's go ahead and one. deploy because we're running short on time here. Right, so, so, so we, can, we can just deploy it and then you can see from the execute, uh, there are n number of methods which are automatically generated here. Now I will quickly jump into the uh, Postman collection. So this is the Postman collection to test the readily available uh, uh, API, uh, REST APIs. So we have three different personas here, the museum curator, consumer one is a Michael who would be uh, purchasing it through the fiat currency. And then the Gary, consumer Gary is who is going to purchase it through the loyalty token. So I'll quickly uh, uh, mint it. So the first step is to mint the NFT. 
And if you see, it would actually mint the NFT with all the details that have been provided into the specification file. You Once it is minted, you can directly put it into the marketplace. So it's just setting the marketplace, uh, it means putting it in the marketplace with, with a price set for that. And you can check the transaction history. So if you see over here, uh, this is where the transaction history, so you initially, you, your price was set to zero and the on-sell flag was false. But uh, later on, it was price was set to 250 and on-sell flag is set to true. So, and now, now the consumer, Michael, would like to purchase it. So he is going to purchase uh, it uh, with a price of 250. Uh, so he has successfully purchased it and he would like to resell it. Now, if he wants to resell, this uh, NFT, so it would again go back to the price is double. Seller. See, he will go back to the seller side, and uh, yeah, now the Gary is going to purchase it through the loyalty token. So this is where the buy with loyalty token method comes into play, and uh, Gary would be able to purchase this. So Gary has successfully purchased it, and if you check the transaction, the entire token uh, history. So this is where the token history is. So you can see that the uh, owner details so this is which ending with 41 whereas the previous one as the owner was 20 right so so the to the enter, entire uh, history is tracked uh, or of this enter token history is tracked and you can develop any application any tokenization applications very quickly and very easily with the help of blockchain right applications. thanks good yeah. you if you could uh, go to the summary oh, uh, okay. sure we'll just finalize here but uh, what you saw basically was a uh, a uh, set of capabilities that really help uh, many, you know, companies and developers to accelerate their process of adopting the blockchain. Um, you know, sometimes there are challenges in terms of infrastructure. Sometimes people have complex development tasks, etc. This blockchain app build, they have low code, no code approach. Auto generation of tokens, both fungible and non fungible tokens, as well as any generic assets, can be included. And you have integrated testing and deployment, which d improves quite a bit the productivity of the developers. Um, you know, Oracle over the last uh, five years, we've been uh, working within the Hyperledger community uh, and in our blockchain platform, have really focused on making it easy and quick to adopt with the blockchain infrastructure and all of the things I showed at the beginning, the development tools, tokenization SDK. We also implemented MVCC-related optimization in the Fabric peers to allow multiple transactions for the same accounts to be committed within the same block, which is somewhat of a limitation in original Fabric. But we have created optimizations to work around that so we can actually run at very high performance. We've done some testing you know, with hundreds of transactions per second in this kind of environment. So with that, I'll uh, stop. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, happy to take a couple of questions here. We have additional information on our blog post recently on the NFTs we created actually in Oracle Cloud Infrastructures, there is this thing called Architecture Center where you can go in and look at various solution playbooks, architecture, reference architectures, etc. There is one specifically for the NFT marketplace, which goes through this in quite a bit more detail, obviously, more than we had you know, in 15 minutes here. But uh, again, thanks for joining. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's using the original Shim API, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we could check. Let's check offline on that. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I think it's using the Shim one. 